Extend IA trial, um, I was one of the principal investigators with my colleague Bruce Campbell, and that was one of the five pivotal trials that showed that mechanical thrombectomy worked. Our next trial was to look at um, a different thrombolytic drug, tenecteplase. It's a genetically modified version of TPA. Uh, it's got a shorter half-life. It can be given as a single bolus, and it's also cost-effective. And so what we did was uh, patients who had a large vessel occlusion with a bad ischemic stroke who were going to have mechanical thrombectomy, they were randomised to receive either tenecteplase or the conventional drug uh, alteplase, and then they were taken to the catheter lab. We did an angiogram and whether or not the drug had worked was recorded. Um, we found that 22% of patients who received tenecteplase, the drug had uh, opened up the artery to the point where it was either completely open or didn't need further treatment uh, versus 10% in the TPA group. If we see early opening of the artery, um, it correlates with benefit, clinical benefit. Uh, arteries don't usually rethrombose. Um, in fact, what often happens with stroke is that arteries at 24 hours are commonly open, but by then it's often too late. And so the benefit of this was we were looking at a population who had a large vessel occlusion and they were administered the drug within 4.5 hours of stroke onset and we found out whether people with a large vessel occlusion actually responded to this drug. Because traditionally we know that large vessel strokes don't open up with the intravenous lytic drugs particularly well. The pleasing thing was that um, using the dose of 0.25 milligrams per kilogram of tenecteplase, there was no increased bleeding risk compared to TPA. Uh, we are embarking on a second trial called Extend IA TNK Part 2 and we've uh, already randomised 36 patients for that trial and that's looking at a higher dose, 0.4 milligrams per kilogram. If it's more efficacious in opening the artery, that'll be good. Um, it'll come potentially with an increased bleeding risk, which would be bad, and we'll see whether the balance between those makes the case for using the higher dose or whether we stick with 0.25 milligrams. Is, is this in a sense a, a in terms of which patients you choose to receive the drug, is it relatively all comers or is there a specific population? It's still time-based. So at the moment, um, the patients with a large vessel occlusion, they have to be seen and have had a CT scan within 4.5 hours of stroke onset to be eligible to receive these strokes. And so it's a select population in terms of the, the patients who are seen early. Uh, we're doing everything we can to get patients seen earlier. There's a public education campaign in Australia called FAST, uh, Face, Arm, Speech, Time, um, to make the point that call an ambulance, go direct to the hospital if you have any of these symptoms because early treatment is better than late. And so we try to get patients into the hospital. I think one of the big benefits to this drug for us would be patients who are referred to us from another hospital. So two thirds of our patients um, come from another hospital um, where they are administered the drug if eligible and then they come to us via ambulance, either air ambulance or road ambulance and come to the cath lab for their mechanical thrombectomy. Um, if you can administer this drug quickly in the referring hospital and if you've got twice as good a chance of the artery being open, then that's going to improve care for patients. If we can get arteries open uh, more rapidly, then there'll be a, a bigger benefit if it can help patients um, come to high volume centres, that's one of the big things as well. We know that patients do better if they go to a high volume centre with highly experienced operators. Um, that involves transferring patients from one hospital to another. If you can do that transfer and also still get a benefit from the intravenous drug, then you're not harming the patient at all. There was a, a very good debate today at the session about um, whether you're better off to have um, less well-trained and less experienced operators who may only do two or three cases a year, providing a service in regional areas that have no alternative, or whether you should transfer those patients. Uh, there's a lot of science and a lot of um, uh, heated personal opinion about the, the debate. I think what this um, Tenecteplase study does for us is allows us to continue with a policy of transferring patients to high volume centres where we know there's lower mortality, there's better uh, good functional outcomes and high volumes 
but get better services. If you're treating large numbers of patients, you do it quicker, you do it better. In fact, recognising uh, that we now have the evidence that said that this technique uh, is clearly better than anything else for treating stroke. It's amazingly powerful, 2.8 patients treated to achieve one extra person well. So it's an amazingly powerful treatment effect. We've got all of the evidence that's there for all to see. There's no debate about that anymore. What we're still failing to do is to deliver that care to as many at-risk people in the community as possible. Um, so I think that's where our focus is now. We're trying to get out of the community, get this delivered. Uh, we have uh, innovations like the mobile stroke ambulance we started uh, in Victoria at the end of last year where a CAT scans in the back of an ambulance and that goes out to someone's home and that allows intravenous treatment um, at the person's home and also triages that person to a comprehensive stroke centre. So it's, it's very interesting also a meeting like this allows all of you to share the different experiences of each of the vast different and diff culturally and, and different populations. It's, it's a fascinating meeting for that because you hear um, some people have got solutions to problems you didn't even know you had uh, and you learn uh, every, every day. We also recognise that the problems that I face in Melbourne where we drain 5.5 million population in a relatively small area compared to the problems that are faced in the Northern Territory within Australia where they have no neurointerventional service are radically different and the same solution isn't going to work at every site. So sharing experience is one way to at least have ideas. Absolutely, and this has always been a great exchange of ideas.